So that'll be for you guys the easiest and best way to cut a music video inside of Premiere Pro. Make sure you guys stay to the very end of the video because there is so much sauce inside of this. And I'm also going to give away something for free that you guys can use on your music videos. It is so gas, but let's hop right into this. So opened up inside of Premiere Pro here, you guys can see we have our timeline open. Now to get started, what we want to do is drag and drop our audio that we have here inside of the timeline. I assume you guys know how to get your clips inside of here, so I'm not going to cover that. But now moving on to our performance scenes, I'm sure you guys have B-roll. We're going to be covering that probably in a later video. You guys can just bring your B-roll to the side and drag it in at points that you want. But this is mainly for cutting performance scene clips. So we have all of our performance scene clips here, as you guys can see. And what you want to do is drag them inside of our timeline, just like so, and making sure that they're one above our audio clip. You don't want to have it on it because if we paste that, you guys can see it deletes the song. We're going to press Control Z and drag it in one above and then drag this one down so you guys can see after i do it a couple of times here that it just becomes second nature and we're going to do this for the rest of our clips all right guys now that we have all of our clips inside of here what you want to do next is you want to highlight all of them right click go over to synchronize here and we're going to make sure we have audio selected at the bottom and then under track channel you want to have mix down selected we're going to hit ok and you guys can see it automatically synchronizes all the video clips to the song super fire now we're going to highlight all of these audio clips from the video clips right click hit unlink and we're going to highlight them one more time and then we're going to delete them now holding option and scrolling in we're going to zoom in press c on our keyboard and then making sure we have s selected so it locks on if you guys clip doesn't lock on make sure you have s selected you guys can see it locks on and we're just going to cut to where the audio starts and we're going to grab these files right here and we're going to drag them towards the end because we don't want to delete them because we could use them as b-roll later as you guys can see here but we're going to drag we're going to highlight all of this and drag it to the beginning now now before we get started on cutting what i want to do first is teach you guys how to color grade a lot of people color at the very end of editing their music videos which i don't think is a good idea now is the best time to color grade before we color grade we're going to go into the top left here hit premiere pro we're going to go over to keyboard shortcuts and then we're going to search enable you want to make sure you have enable set to E. It should say shift E if you haven't changed this. We're going to hit X if it says shift E and we're going to click on it and then just press E and then hit OK. Now that you guys have all of this set up here, what you want to do next is drag down your audio just for the future reference. So you can see all the peaks and we're going to right click inside of a project, hit new item and then click adjustment layer right here. You're going to hit OK and then drag and drop that inside of your project just like so. Now that we have our adjustment layer in here, we're going to open up Lumetric Color. If you guys don't have Lumetric Color in a tab right here, and you always search it inside of Effects, I recommend going up to Window, going down to Lumetric Color and clicking on it, and just dragging it over to your tab over here like I have. Now that we're clipped on the adjustment layer, we're going to go into Creative, under Look, hit None, and then hit Browse. Now, I'm going to be using my Ultimate LUT pack that you guys can grab below. It has over 250 plus unique LUTs and is honestly just so fire for music videos. You will never run out of LUTs. There's so many creative looks inside of here that are just insane. I highly recommend going down below and checking it out. You guys can use the code 15 off to save yourself 15% off this LUT pack. So we're going to go with a completely random LUT. I'm going to go with 54 here. And you guys can see instantly we have a fire look. And if you do want to expand on it even more, for example, this clip here, I recommend just clicking on the clip and then going on basic correction and just playing with it here. Now, I do recommend coloring them one by one, starting at the bottom and moving up just by pressing E to enable and disable them just like I'm doing now. But we don't have time for that. So we're going to go ahead to where the beat drops in the music video. And we're going to put our playhead right here and then press I to create this in point. Now, we're going to drag our adjustment layer up so we have room for our clips when we drag them up. And pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to turn the clips on pressing E. We're going to watch them. Yeah. If we like that, we're going to cut it and bring it up just like so. And keep in mind, you want to cut to the beat. Listen to the hi-hats, listen to the kicks, listen to the 808. Yeah, you guys can see I'm just playing the next clips through. If I don't like them, just disabling them. Yeah, I'm so for this one, I'm going to use it as an example. We can see if we play it through, his hand is going to go up and then come down. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to speed ramp it. I'm going to cut it right where his hand is about to go down, drag it up, turn these ones off, extend it, press C, cut it, right click, go over to speed and duration, and then change it to 50% here. Now, if we play it through, yeah, I'm a yeah, I'm a we get that cool slow motion. Now we're going to cut it again, right click it, go over to speed and duration and make it 150. So if we play it through and bring it to about like that amount of frames, 
and turn on another one for after. You guys can see it slows down and then speeds up. Yeah, I'm a metamorphosis. Yeah, metamorphosis. Yeah. Super gas. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can see just how second nature becomes for the yeah. next scene. So we'll start back on here. Yeah. That's hard right there. We're going to drag this one up. Maybe we can slow this one down too. Right about here. Change it to 50. Let's look down here. Wait, where that 808 hits or the kick or whatever it is. We're going to put a different clip in here. Sick, guys. Now that we have our cut, you guys can just learn from the fact that I'm listening and looking at the peaks of the beat and then doing the slow-mo cuts and speed-up cuts to that as well. Now that we have this inside of here, what we're going to use next to create the transitions, hits, shakes, wipes, all of that to add so much more energy to this is one of two options. Now, if you only have Premiere Pro, I recommend checking out my fast movement effects bundle pack it comes with all of these different hits shakes wipes flickers etc that are all drag and drop on an adjustment layer and super easy to use or if you guys have after effects shake sauce 2 is out now if you guys go to the link down below and use my code tapes you guys can get it for a one week free trial so i highly recommend checking that out if you have after effects i'm going to be showing that after i show off fast movement effects v3 but if you guys don't have after effects Fast movement effects is the way to go, and you guys can go grab it down below and use code 15 off to save yourself 15% off. So basically to use this, we're going to go into project and just like before, we're going to drag and drop an adjustment layer in. Now you want to make sure your adjustment layers are around six frames and I'll show you why. If we go over to effects here, you guys can see beside like slide up fast, it says eight frames. Oh my God, it says four frames. They all say the amount of frames and usually they're anywhere from four to eight. So I think six is just a sweet spot. You can count it out just with your arrow keys, one, two, three, four, five, six. And what I recommend doing is putting it directly in between your two clips because this is where the transition is obviously going to happen. So I'm going to put a couple of these in here just so I can show off a few transitions. Now that these are all in here, let's go and click on this first one and let's put on a fast whip with flash. Let's go on the second one and put a soft hit with flash. Uh, let's do the best hit in here. Maybe we'll do... Oh my god and then hit insane so let's play it without all of these on and let's play it with them um, so my computer seems to be lagging a little bit right now but you guys can see how fire they look i don't know why it's lagging and playing them weird anyways it should not be that slow but you guys get the point so now showing you guys inside of After Effects with Shake Sauce 2, all you have to do to use that is highlight your clip, hold Option and drag down. I'm just doing this as a safety precaution in case like the one gets messed up, we have two. We're gonna highlight the top one now. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go over to replace with After Effects composition. Now let's name this Shake and boom, you guys can see it's opened up inside of After Effects here. And we have the Shake Sauce 2 tab opened up as well. Let me show you guys how this works. Now, pretty much what you can do when you see it, you guys can see we have constant and then keyframed. These are going to be your constant shakes that apply to the entire project, just giving it like a soft camera shake or a hard one. And then the keyframed ones are going to be used for transitions. Now, the way it works, if you want to sort them by flicker, motion blur, mirror, it'll show the ones that only have those stuff. As you guys can see here, only these three have flicker. Uh, all of them have motion blur. Pretty much all of them have mirror. Same thing with keyframed ones. And if you want to go frame by frame, you could use these arrow keys right here. Super gas. So to get started, we're going to click in between our two clips here. We're going to go over to the keyframed ones and let's do quick right here and then hit the check mark. You guys can see instantly this pops up inside of here. I recommend hitting U on your keyboard to see where the red keyframes land, which is going to be in the center of your clip where you want them to be. So if I go ahead and play this through, you guys can see we have a nice transition just like that. Now, keep in mind, click off of the layer, move over to the next one. And now we're going to look for a different one. Let's do like stomp here, hit the check mark, and it's going to create a brand new blue layer. And if we play this one through, we'll hit you. You guys can see we have another hit just like that. And that's going to go right where it slows down, which is super fire. Sometimes After Effects moves the clips around. As you guys can see here, it's very strange. All right, now moving on to our next one here, we're going to click off the blue clip. And let's go for like a zoom twist. So we're going to hit the check mark now. 
and boom you guys can see another one instantly comes in so if i turn all of these off here and we just play them through super fire guys it's looking great we'll do one more let's do uh nodding hit the check mark we'll have another one come in and we'll play it through super hard guys now the coolest part about this is you can actually create your own transitions inside of here if we hit the plus button we can keyframe all of this stuff here and create our own stuff the coolest thing is too all the keyframes are live so let's say we add one here and then we move to here and we change it it's automatically going to add a keyframe and if you want to easy ease it all you have to do is press option and click on it and it easy eases that keyframe right there we can highlight these it just makes it so much easier for you guys and the sickest part about all of this is once you save your preset like i have here you just want to set your center keyframe so wherever the center of it would be for example we'll set it right here it'll make them red that just shows when someone uses it it puts that directly in the center where the transition would take place now if we go ahead and save it we can name it like test one and you can actually export these and send them to your friends so they can download them and use them inside of their shake sauce so if we go and hit this one right here so let's for example if we sh select the dot shake file they can bring it inside of theirs and the sickest part about all this stuff guys is if we go over and sort by custom we select test 2 like i said we could just save the dot shake file and the sickest part about all this is actually if you're an editor you can make money off of shake sauce if you create your own shakes that are super fire you can export them and sell them via instagram via shopify via shop pay all that kind of stuff so i highly recommend grabbing this at least for the one week free trial that you guys can grab down below making a bunch of custom shakes and then trying to give them away to friends or sell them through instagram make some money as an editor that's the best way is passive income in that way anyways guys if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like all the editing packs i use will be linked below i'll see you guys in the next video peace